Hello my soccer universe to the first World Cup review video. Boy, it is really really tough to have such a World Cup schedule with now today four games on, on a uh, working day. It again, it makes it so much harder to really really get into this World Cup. Uh, yesterday was probably the most stressful day for me watching World Cup. I saw the first half of England, kind of. <laughs> I saw the second half of the Netherlands because I in between had to teach and run around. And yeah, honestly, I had I, I left uh, for teaching uh, with the car from here, I think after 20 minutes in or, or, or so. And I had the game then on the phone. And that's how I kind of I heard more the first half and then whenever the goal was I stopped the car to watch the replay and I saw the highlights. But this is how crazy I am and same goes for Senegal Netherlands where uh, no I did not watch this on the car uh, a little bit on the tramway but other than that I watched in the second half at least there's an evening game and I have to say I know the evening game is pandering definitely towards the American or the audience because if you would put that game first, no one will be able to see it. I just wish that, you know, that the 8 o'clock games we only see uh, group heads and not uh, nondescript teams in a way. But, you know, it was, not a, it, it was probably the first game where I had real atmosphere. I will go a little bit through the games, but first I want to make some general observations uh, from the mundane to the actual quite critical. Um, and the first one is, I will try to put the matchups that we're talking about. I, I will do it now every other day. I will try to do that, although it will not be easy. So I'm always thinking Thursday will be tough. But let's see, so uh, the matchups I put here and then here is basically the five favorites I put on that side. So we have both of that in there. And yeah, you see three England shirts in this video, uh, which is also nice. In any case, uh, quick on the headlines uh, bef uh, be be before I go into, in, in, into some op op observations. We had England, I said it in a um, big video, we had England... Uh, Starting off the tournament with fireworks, eight goals scored. What can I can ask more? I think though we've learned nothing about England except that they can score goals against a lower opposition. Um, we had Qatar being completely awful in their first game. The Netherlands and Senegal a dull game ending with late goals, and the United States and Wales. This was a game of two halves. Uh, that ends in a deserved draw, I think, in the end. But first, a few observations that I want to say. I mean, let's start with, with, with the mundane. Uh, one of the things that I always look forward to in the World Cup is how will it be presented on, 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 on TV? Like, how are the scores shown and, you know, the little box up there? And I have to say, while it all looks kind of well designed, it also looks a little bit boring. It's all very square and there's only for the score in the middle, there's this little star. Um, it's nothing fancy. Yes, we don't need to have to have that for the 2006 and 2010 World Cups where it was all 3D effects and hands on, which was the sign of the times. Now we're a little bit more understated. However, I was expecting a little bit more and at a bare minimum, I, I would have expected that at least the team colors are shown next to the flags. Um, and I know who is playing in what color. But for instance, my girls watching yesterday Senegal and Netherlands and saying, uh, which team is orange? And they thought in the Netherlands because that's why white flag are there, white. And I said, well, if you look at it, you see the colors of Senegal in the white shirt. Ah, yeah. So uh, that was just, you know, it's a little bit underwhelming. Um, on the flip side, one good thing that they got rid of. What really annoyed me at the Russia World Cup were those countdowns to kick off. They were so blaringly loud. And I think we had this even at other tournaments as well. This is gone. Great. Another thing, more than mundane said, a little bit more critically already. We had huge stoppage times. Um, and I understand they want to get as much playing time in as possible. And yes, the England game was a total outlier because there was an injury to a goalkeeper. But I think the nine minute stoppage time yesterday for the US uh, in, uh, at the end, that seemed a little bit excessive. I think you, yeah, it's not a bad thing, but you know, treat us slightly a little bit more and i think if you're really gonna be that pedantic about it let's go to net playing time i really think uh that would be the next uh development 
Um, I also think that um, this the first offside decision that we had uh, in the Ecuador game, it was not very well communicated. Overall, uh, I needed to rely on the expertise in the studio uh, to really get it later on, uh, because you know, uh, at least. Yes, give us the picture with the player that is offside, but then give us also the overall shot and the line uh, that we can really, really uh, make this out. So, yeah. Staying with the opener uh, and in general, the fans and the way that the tournament projects itself. We're getting crowds announced that are way above capacity and then we see huge, huge swaths of empty seats uh, it was especially glaring at the Senegal Netherlands game where yes sometimes if the shakes are sitting there with their garb um, it looks like an empty seat it is not uh, and you can tell that uh, rather quickly but if, if there's some sweeping shots that are not exactly the main perspective but a little bit up uh, it is just uh, annoying how empty those stadiums are and again putting uh, home now nah, this is not a world this is not a place where we should have a world cup uh, it just it just doesn't sit right. And I add to that that you cannot tell me that Qatar has that many uh, hardcore fans all in t-shirts and choreographed and, and so on. These seem to be canned fans. It reminds me of the North Korean fans at the 2010 World Cup. Uh, doesn't add to, to the atmosphere. And to make matters worse for the Qatari fans, uh, fans, uh, is that the Ecuadorian fans, which was sprinkled across the stadium, however, I heard more of the Ecuadorian fans than, 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 than the others. The first time that I really had World Cup feeling, and yes, it was maybe the uh, second game where I really sat down and uh, enjoyed myself, uh, but I got the real World Cup feeling at the US and Wales when the national anthems were sung, uh, especially the Welsh anthem was one of the more emotional highlights for me. Speaking of national anthems, the last thing I want to talk about before we talk about games are the, are the protests or the lack thereof. Um, it was also emotional when the Iranian players came out and did not sing the national anthem, even under the threat of repercussions for them and potentially their families at home. They are making a statement for the larger good there. Um, you know, uh, I have heard, I think it might have been over exaggerated, but uh, who knows? Uh, that there is potential jail time or, you know, some fines be, uh, heading their, 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 their way. Uh, it's not a pretty safe situation, but they made a loud and clear statement. Which gives leads us to armband gate. Uh, those one love armbands. And, uh, you know, I heard today a, 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 a little bit more that, you know, one love. Yes, it is a little bit in support of the LGBTQ communicate and community and so on uh, but I think it, they wanted to make a broader statement they also wanted to make it uh, you know so um, how to say so uh, non-offensive as possible so that you don't have the rainbow color and there's just a heart and one love and you know um, kind of a little bit inoffensive FIFA of course no we don't want to have any we come out with our own armbands with uh, social slogans which uh, it just doesn't sound right. But what is even worse, in my personal opinion, is FIFA, and this is now goes to FIFA and those Western European associations. FIFA banned the armband and said this is a political armband. Although it was made in such a way that it's not political at all, but you know, okay, uh, FIFA said that nah, is political. Screw you. Um, so, and then anyone who wears this will get a yellow card for it. In this moment, you have here an act of defiance. And if I look at the England team, they are still kneeling in spite of being booed at home. They are making a political statement by kneeling there. Why do you then say, I'm not gonna wear this friggin' armband? Do you not believe in the message? Why do you risk, why don't you risk a yellow card? Honestly, honestly, my first thought is, okay, I still want to wear the armband and I have a captain in every different game. I will have, have a captain and just think about it. And I don't want to pull it down on Hair Hurricane. I said uh, already in a post and so I, I don't think it's upon the players to make a uh, huge statements. However, if they really believe, if the National Association says something, say it makes this grand statement, we're going to wear this and then they are not. 
and then already the uh, Hugo Lloris stepping down from it, it just doesn't sit well. And But I'm, I'm thinking, imagine the picture. Harry Kane kneeling with the armband just before kickoff, receiving a yellow card, wearing this armband. That is a sign of protest and you take a little bit of an inconvenience, especially Harry, Harry Kane who doesn't get many yellow cards anyway. I find it so disappointing and shallow in many ways that we say, okay, now I understand there is a, you, it will hinder you, but you know, it's a yellow card. You probably can get a second yellow card for the second game and see it's the last game when you already qualify, something like that, or do it just for the first game. Or as I said, have a different captain for every game. I hear that, and I really want, I hope this is confirmed that Denmark still wants to wear it. And Denmark is really out there, and I actually think that potentially Denmark will suffer from that on the sporting level as well, um, because there will be much attention on them and the general mood of the crowds, and, and so will swing against Denmark potentially. So I feel they will expose themselves, but uh, if they do so, uh, even better on them. Okay, enough of ranting and observations. Um, I want to go now uh, through the games, not making big... I don't want this to be a huge, huge video. I gotta get to, to, it, uh, to work and other things as well. But here the first uh, four results. Uh, we had Ecuador beating Qatar, England 6-2. Um, over Iran, uh, Senegal losing 2-0 uh, against the Netherlands and the United States 1-1 against uh, Wales. We have a, thanks to the 6-2, we have a really high goal average at this moment, which is kind of exciting. Um, so with 6 uh, plus 8, we had uh, a total of 14 goals already scored. Uh, if we go Qatar, Ecuador, I, I already said um, it was a really disappointing performance by Qatar. Really cheap looking pants as well. I got I I gotta say baffling to say the least because honestly I thought that this is a good Qatar team that won the Asian Cup that actually even played at the Copa America always acquitted themselves well. Uh, you know not the ones but you know not not being complete out of play at the first half they did not seem on the field at all, like at all. Ecuador could have run, could and should have run up the score there. Uh, Anna Valencia scored three goals. The first one was taken off for an offside that in the end I think was all right, but it needed a lot of explaining why this wasn't. And of course, yes, the goalie comes out. That's why it, it seems a little bit more confusing. But that I got. But it's only because the player that is offside in the end make uh, ends up playing a pass that it, it counts. So that's all right. Anna Valencia gets a penalty, then uh, even gets a second goal. Uh, Really nice looking head, although I don't think he meant to, uh, he actually mishit it a little bit. Uh, he also gets uh, injured, and I think he should have been taken off then because I think he might have hurt himself a little a little bit more. And, and again, Ecuador really could have done themselves a huge favor by uh, scoring a few more goals because it was in there. But the second half was a snooze fest, and this was the joint least shots at a World Cup game since 1966. So it was not a great opener, although I found the first half actually a little bit entertaining. However, the, after, the evening game, the friendly between Austria and, friend, uh, and, and Italy, was just uh, as, like three levels above it. It was a freaking friendly. Um, I want to go then Senegal, Netherlands. Let's stay within the group. Um, it was kind of a, a a weird game. I think both teams, the, the, the Netherlands, are still trying to find themselves, although they have really good players in there. Senegal look a little bit more like a team but with a punch up front. As I said, I mm, did not see the first half really, but from what I could tell from the second half, um, that was the impression I got, but there were little chances. I think uh, there was a header by uh, Van Dijk. Senegal actually had the better chances, the Dutch more off, off of the game, and then it's actually uh, Edward Mendy who makes two mistakes. The first one, uh, the young cross uh, that Gakpo hand, heads in, and you know, Mendy, he's come, come coming out, but I honestly think he has to get that ball, so this should not, not be in the second goal, which uh, makes it seem like a clear victory that it wasn't. I think a 1 0 was m way more indicative of, of, of the game than a 2 0. Um, deep in stoppage time, uh, it was a car contact where uh, I think it was a Memphis shot that uh, again Mandy 
uh, Paris into the way of Klassen and uh, it ends up a 2-0 for the Netherlands. Good start for them. It's all top of the... They're both top, top of the group. Uh, the Ecuador-Senegal game will be a huge one. Um, I have a feeling... Uh, yeah, no, it, it's pretty clear. I also found it interesting that Senegal, although their jerseys are shown with a star, when you buy them as a fan, they don't have the star. They didn't have the star and I wonder why. Um... Let's go to Group B, England, Iran. I already said, I mean, every, everything I need, need to say around. Um, a huge uh, thing is that uh, the goalie for Iran got injured. Um, that I think had uh, quite the effect on Iran. I actually think that Iran, over, especially the first half, didn't play all that badly. They actually defended not that badly. It's just that England were really, really good in taking their chances. Yes, there should have been an early penalty on Harry Maguire. Uh, that was Greco-Roman re Greco Roman wrestling. Uh, you know, there, there were a few seeds, but uh, England were ruthless. I mean, the goal by Bellingham, uh, Maguire also hit the crossbar before that. He was actually offensively quite active. Um, but I think uh, with Hosseini coming off in the 20th minute... Uh, no, come, come, come on for Beerland. Be um, that made something. I think they also left the playmaker make, make out. And in in in, in a way, uh, the Iran team seemingly, what I hear a little bit is uh, also not happy. The Carlos Geras is back, so that also plays a fact. Fact, fact, fact. Danger. They tried to play forward. Uh, they actually tried to defend, but England just found the right ways, and that actually is a huge credit. Scoring six goals is pretty good. Uh, and especially the young guys, Bellingham Saka, uh, Raheem Sterling. I mean, that goal was really well taken. Uh, and then when the others come on, Rashford with, with, with a nice touch and Grealish gets an assist from Callum Wilson, who has a chance to score his first World Cup goal, but he's Grealish's better position. So all is really well. This is a huge moral boost for the, for the English. I think that's, that's the one thing you, you can take out of it. Even the two goals conceded. I mean, Taremi, yes, Wills, Wills got a one, the other one's a penalty. Uh, I think it added to the spectacle. I just think that from this game we didn't learn much. The only thing we learned is that I have no clue about anything because I said Iran will make it to the quarters. <laughs> but hey, I said I'm riding high on Ecuador. And then the last game between the United States and Wales. The US was so much better in the first half and should have had this game in the bag. The goal scored by Wea, and of course this is the son of George Wea, uh, was so well taken with the holder play up uh, by Sar Sergeant Pulisic getting the ball and then playing a well-timed pass to Wea. The only thing that the US have to kick themselves is that they didn't score a second or a third because Wales didn't get it right. They had uh, Bale as a lone striker up, 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 up front. The US were doubling them up, defending them really, really well. Whatever Wales tried, the US had them. And then Kiefer Moore comes on. And suddenly there's a focal point up front and the US are in trouble. And Wales were pressing, pressing, pressing. They get a penalty, a rather stupid penalty. Yes, he probably didn't see Bale there, but it was a rather stupid penalty uh, to uh, give away. And then I actually thought that Wales will win that one. But it ends in a 1-1, which on balance I think was the correct um, result. But, you know, I think if I, if I was the American team, I really wonder why couldn't we react in the second half. So, with that, we have the standings now that uh, Netherlands and Ecuador both on three points up top. England are uh, already really looking pretty and it will be a title between the United States and Wales where the US have to play England next, where Wales plays against Iran. This could be a, very, a really, really crucial game right there. As for the projection for these uh, two groups, uh, it stays more or less as expected in Group B. Group A, Ecuador now holding the advantage already. Um, but as I said, Ecuador, Senegal, this will tell us a huge deal about Senegal and whether they can move on. Uh, the projected bracket, uh, the only thing that changes, Ecuador will now play England, which is a replay of the 2006 um, round of 16 matchup. But so far, not much has changed. Otherwise, we're still very early. And as for the favorites, yes, England are moving up because they have already played. So there's a little bit less jeopardy, whereas Brazil, Argentina, France uh, will still have to play. The Netherlands similarly moving up because of that, as does Ecuador and so on. 
Today we have, uh, and I, I probably this video will post just before the kickoff, we have four uh, matches. Uh, I'm looking forward to Argentina and France because those are two favorites. I think the Denmark game is because of armband gate are really interesting. Mexico, Poland, I think is probably from a sporting level the most intense because that might be a shot at second place for them. Uh, but it could also end up with being a nil-nil draw. In any case, that was it for me. How did you like the games? Uh, what do you say about the points that I've observed below? I would love to hear from you too. Um, and yeah, how did you like the two favorites, England and the Netherlands, uh, when you saw them and which game did you enjoy so far the most? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!